The DXO Mark scores for the D850 just came out. Uh, impressive to say the least. I think there's a silver lining here. The D850 is objectively speaking on paper. It is a fantastic, wonderful camera. Congratulations, Nikon. Rather, should I say congratulations, Sony, because those scores are off of a Sony-made sensor. So even if Nikon did give all the specs that they wanted Sony to do to Sony, still made it. The fact that Sony made it is one of the worst kept secrets in 17 for the interchangeable lens camera market. Now, Sony Semiconductor Solutions won't, it will probably be contractually obligated to not be able to share anything that Nikon specified to be in the sensor with Sony Digital Imaging. To be honest, Sony Digital Imaging doesn't care. Sony Digital Imaging that's responsible for Sony's digital imaging products. The 850 seems like from the tests and the specs, one of two things like a more than adequate replacement for the D800, D810, or it seems like a camera that's built to be better on paper than the A7R2. Now, Nikon probably, if, if Nikon were to take the tack and say, you know, we're going to try to get Sony users to switch to Nikon, they'd probably know that wouldn't work. They'd probably actually be targeted with, they'd probably be targeting this camera towards giving people who are Nikon shooters a really great reason to stay with Nikon instead of switch. The price point with Nikon's historic uh, misguided approach to pricing seems, and you can see that with the D5 versus the 1DX Mark II, seems like, you know, a bit of a Hail Mary. Sony Digital Imaging doesn't care because the D850 has come out two years after the A7R II. 7R3 or the A9R, whatever it is, will, on paper at any rate, waltz all over the D850. Like DSLRs or dislike mirrorless, the D850 is probably going to be the best possible choice. But for the people that don't care about having a mirror, or the people that don't care about OVFs, I imagine that the A7R 3 or the A9R, whichever name they choose, will be the better camera. It's had two years to come up with something really special to waltz all over the A7R 2 the A7R2 is only marginally, in my opinion, it seems like a very marginal difference between the A7R2 and D850. But the A7R2 is only marginally beneath the D850. So the A7R3 will probably just destroy the D850 on paper. The, the D850, in terms of sensor performance, objective sensor performance, is only a marginal improvement on the A7R2. A lot more dynamic range, about a bit more in color depth, and only two-thirds the ISO performance is the D850. I will never poo-poo more dynamic range. I think more dynamic range is always better. I also will always prefer a really good balance between dynamic range and ISO performance. Yeah, the D850 beats out the A7R2 on paper. Um, they both beat out the 5D Mark IV. Whatever 5DS, 5DSR replacement comes into the market will probably be slightly not as good as we all think it should be, especially in comparison. For me at least, the way the A7R2, the A9 fit in my hand, the way it balances really well between dynamic range, megapixels, 399 on-sensor face detect autofocus points, ISO performance. All of these will keep me gravitating towards Sony's mirrorless interchangeable lens camera offerings instead of an option akin to the D850. D850 which lacks on-sensor PDAF for decent AFC in video. My opinion is too big for me, for my hands. Might be great size for yours. Sensor that's more geared towards high dynamic range at base ISO instead of one that's geared towards a nice balance between good dynamic range at base and high ISO performance. I may check your boxes. I think I, at any rate, am more interested in seeing what Nikon's gonna bring to the mirrorless interchangeable lens camera table in 2018. I think the D850 is a dope ass camera, for sure. But I don't think that having a marginally higher score than the A7R2 suddenly means that it's the pinnacle of imaging. I think its base ISO dynamic range is impressive, 
and definitely it will be cheaper to get a Nikon D850 or D810 even than a medium format with lenses and all that as a system. It'll be cheaper. But I can't help but think that what Nikon's doing with the D850, it can very easily do in a mirrorless body. I think what Nikon's doing with the D850, they need to take that product design philosophy and shove it through the rest of their camera range instead of where they're giving more of everything instead of sticking with their typical and Canon's typical product design philosophy of harsh segmentation. I guess we'll see how it, how it works out. I'm very interested in hearing what you think about the D850 and about DxO's uh, scoring. It is two years after the A7R2 came out. I think if it takes, if it continues to take Nikon two years to compete with Sony, they're just going to be left in the dust. I think if the same with Canon. So especially once I get in the mirrorless market. But anyway, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. I'm looking forward to seeing the next one.